Yeah, well, the steric and this is section 10.1, distance, midpoint, and the circle. Um, so distance and midpoint are just a couple of formulas that are actually really easy to use. Um, they look kind of reminiscent in terms of the little subscripts of uh, the slope formula, and it's because we are working with two ordered pair again. So if we had an x1, y1, some point over here, and x2, y2, some point over there, when we are finding the midpoint, um, it's the average of the x's, and then comma, the average of the y's. So you add the y's divided by two, add the x's divided by two. And what that will do is give us the coordinates of that point right there, which would be the midpoint of that line segment. So we're finding the average of the x's, and the average of the x's is giving us that x value, and then the average of the y's is giving us that y value. And so then together that will make our midpoint. Um, for the distance formula, what we're doing there is going x2 minus x1, which is actually giving us that distance and then squared plus y2 minus y1. That's giving us that distance. So you can see this is just the Pythagorean theorem. Um, no, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And then if you root both sides to undo that root, you have that version, which is exactly what this is. And these are just the a's and the b's. So we're doing this side squared plus this side squared for the square root. And then that's going to give us the distance between those two points. Um, and that's that formula right there. So let me show that with some actual points. Okay, so looking at these two points, I'm just going to use this as my x1, y1, x2, y2. And so to find the midpoint first, we're going to do our average of our x's. So negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2 is just our x coordinates. And then the average of our y coordinates. So 1 plus negative 3, and I could just write that as minus 3 as well. Uh, negative 2, or negative 4 plus 2 would be negative 2 over 2. And that would also be negative 2 over 2. And so that makes our midpoint negative 1, negative 1. I'm just going to plot these. On the homework, there is not a graph. I just want to plot these and show kind of how this is looking. So x is negative 4, y is, whoops, positive 1. And when x is 2, y is negative 3. And so you can kind of see right there, negative 1, negative 1, that's the midpoint between those two on, of that line segment. And then to get this distance, um, we'll just do our distance formula. So that would be distance equals big root, and then I'll go change in x, so 2 minus, careful with the signs right there, negative 4. So I always write the minus no matter what's coming next, and then we'll just clean up the signs on the next line. And then this one would be uh, negative 3 minus 1. And cleaning that up a little bit, we get root, that'd be 6 squared plus negative 4 squared. So that is 36 and 16, also known as square root of 52. And then I think that is a, yeah, that's a 4 times a 13 in there. And uh, here comes a cat. Ooh, long kitty. And I can take the square root of the 4, and that makes 2, and then root 13. So that would be my distance between those two points. Okay, so the next up is circles, and circles and distance formula are actually basically the same thing with a little bit different labeling. Uh, so you can see on the distance formula, if I, if I square both sides of this, I would have d squared equals change in x squared plus change in y squared, which is very much what this right here is looking like. Um, what a circle, what these do is let me take one that's a little bit simpler. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if I have a circle, this one happens to be at the origin. I'll draw some triangle in there, x, y. So x squared plus y squared, that is that hypotenuse. And it's also the radius in this case. And so we're finding all the pairs x's and y's that keep this fixed radius. So say this was one for instance, we're finding every possible value of x and y that keeps that distance one. 
and then it's just sweeping out that one all the way through for all these possible ordered pair. And so that's where this definition comes in. The circle is all the points in the plane that are a fixed distance from a given point in the plane. The given point is called the center, that's our HK, and the fixed distance is called the radius, and that's this R right here. And so from that HK, we're just sweeping out that fixed distance all the way through, and then that's what creates a circle. And then because that's a fixed distance, that's why the distance formula and this go together. Um, and then the other thing is midpoint formula, right? If you have the diameter of a circle, then the midpoint is the center. So that's the other thing that this has to do with each other. Um, let me start with this pretty friendly one. When there's nothing going on with the X and the Y, what that means is that the HK is zero. And so the, the set of circle is just centered at the origin. And then remember this is R squared on this side. This is uh, always showing as a square of R, not R itself. So in this case, R would be five and it has a center at zero, zero. So there's zero, zero. And then I just measure um, up five, down five, and then right five, left five. And the computer will draw you a nice circle. I will attempt to draw one here. And then that's it, it's graphed. So for this next example, we have this two, three going on negative 2, 3, um, and that's almost our HK. So notice the formula is X minus H. So the same thing as we saw with parabolas back in 5, that is showing backwards because of that minus. So whatever we see here, we see negative 2, positive 3. That means our center is going to be at positive 2, negative 3, because when I pos put positive 2 in this formula, it shows us X minus 2. When I put negative three in here, minus a negative, that shows it as three. So you just have to remember these are backwards. Um, and it also, the same way our shift, remember the ones on the inside, minus went right and plus went left. We're gonna see that same situation, but now, unfortunately, plus is down and minus will be up. So this one is also backwards now. So from the center, X is two, and y is negative three, so there's our center. And then on the end here is 16, so that means our radius is four, because remember this is r squared. So just count down four, right and left and up. Um, I think for you guys on the computer, you just click the center and then you click out four and then it draws you a nice perfect circle. Oops, that one should be right there actually. Okay, so much like the problems where Sometimes they were not in vertex form. Sometimes circles aren't in standard form. And because if we look back at this again, it's got those completed squares. This is another place where we're going to uh, need to use completing the square. Um, a little bit easier in here than it was um, in the parabola chapter. So um, in this case, I have an x squared term and, and I have a y squared and a linear term in y. So that means the x squared term, I'm good. That one's just gonna end up being a, a zero. But for this y, since it has that linear term, that means it has some kind of sh uh, vertical shift going, so I'm gonna need to complete the square there. Oops, and not just make up sides. Okay, so minus six y. And then this is where we do the half of six is three, and then three squared makes nine. So I'm gonna add nine onto both sides. And back with the parabolas, we had to add, subtract on the same side. This time we don't have a y over here, we just have a number, so it's nice. I get to just do kind of the regular old add on both sides. Um, x squared, again, there's no linear term, so I don't have to worry about that one. Here, that's gonna factor down to our trinomial square. So that's gonna be y minus three quantity squared. And then seven and nine makes 16. Uh, so from there, now I can see my radius, or sorry, my center is at zero, three, and my radius is four. So an x is zero, y is three, and then a radius of four should put me just about there. Okay, and this next one, same thing. This time there, there's uh, x's and y's in the linear term, so I'm gonna group those together. I'm just gonna leave myself a little bit of space there for a second and then go plus y squared minus four y. Leave myself a little space equals four. So then 
for the x's, I'm going to go half of 2 is 1. 1 squared makes 1. So I go plus 1, plus 1. And then for the y's, um, we're going to have half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared makes 4. So plus 4, plus 4. So since I'm going to have two perfect squares, I have to complete the square twice. This one is x uh, plus 1 quantity squared. And then this one is a minus and adds to plus, so that would be y minus 2 quantity squared. And then 4 and 4 and 1 makes 9. So that means I have a center at negative 1, positive 2, and a radius of 3. So when x is negative 1, y is 2, and then radius of 3, down 3, over and over. Okay, we're asked to find the equation, and we're told that the circle passes through the origin. And then we kind of have to surmise our, our center based on the graph. So it looks like it's right there. And that point appears to be x is 3. Oops, don't believe that one. It should be that one. Uh, x is 3 and y is 2. So the center is 3, 2. Um, what I don't have, so right for my, to fill in my circle formula, I need x minus h squared and then y minus k. But I also need r. And I don't have r right now. But I can find r because um, that's basically the distance formula. Um, I can also, so a couple of ways I can do that, I could just show them in the distance formula, or I could put them in here and I could throw the center and this point zero, zero, and it's the exact same thing. So my center is my h, k, and x, y, my point on the curve is zero, zero, right? So this would just be uh, zero minus three squared plus y minus two squared equals r squared. So that is negative three squared would be nine, negative two squared would be four equals r squared, or r squared equals um, 13. And it doesn't ask me to find the radius per se, um, but just write the equation. So I don't need to do the root on that because what, what I actually need is r squared. So uh, my, my equation will be x uh, minus three, plus y minus 2 equals 13. And again, I could use the distance formula, and I get the exact same 13. Um, if you did that, you would have gotten distance equal root 13, and then you'd have to remember to square it, because this is squared on the end. So let's find the equation of the circle with a center. So there's our hk at there and passes through that point. So basically the same as the last one, instead of zero, zero, it's a, it's a point. Um, this time I think I'll do radius equals distance formula. So I'll just go um, x2 minus x1. So that will be four minus negative two plus y2, two minus y1, three. And this is six squared plus negative one squared. So that'll be six, uh, negative one squared to make one. So my radius is going to be uh, root square root 37. So now when I write this out, I'm gonna have x minus negative two, so that will show as a plus two, plus y minus three squared. And then, because remember this is r squared, so it'll be a plain 37. Okay, a couple more. Um, find an equation of a circle with a center at negative two, negative three, that is tangent to the y-axis in the form of that, where a, b, and c are constants. Um, and so I put a graph on here um, just so I can explain it, because I found myself wanting to draw a graph, and I don't draw very good graphs. On the homework, there isn't a graph, but for me, even a little halfway sketches kind of helps me work out this tangent to the y-axis bit. So here it says the center is at negative two, negative three, and then tangent to the y-axis means it's just going to touch at that one spot. So what that does, once I can picture that in my head, that gives me my radius. Because if this is a center and it's touching right there, it's gotta be two. And then that gets me the rest of my circle. If I needed to graph it, it would be here. Um, but with radius of two and center, there's my hk, I can just write out my answer. 
So that is going to be um, x minus negative, so plus 2 plus y minus negative would be plus 3 squared. Um, r is 2, so careful, r squared would be 4. So on this one, the directions were find the y-intercepts of the graph of the equation, and then I just messed it up and solved for the x-intercepts. So this time I'm going to solve for the y-intercepts. So if I'm looking for the y-intercepts, then that means x equals 0. If it had asked for the x-intercepts, then I would let the y's equal 0. So here I'm letting x equals 0. I'm solving for y. So this would be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus y squared minus 4y equals 5. So the zeros drop out, so we wouldn't have had to actually written, write them if we don't want. I'll move that 5 over. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is a squared, so it's quadratic, so I want to get it to 0. And then we're saying what multiplies to be negative 5 and adds to be negative 4. So that would be y minus 5, y plus 1. So y equals 5 or y equals negative 1. Um, but in terms of intercepts, we want to make sure that we write those as ordered pair. So that would be 0, 5, because remember we let x equal 0 back there, and 0, negative 1. This last one's a little tricky. Um, and this is something that I wouldn't pick as the test question, but your Calc 1 teacher will. Um, so this I idea of tangent lines is going to come back in a big way when you hit uh, 151. Um, so the center of a circle is the point C right here, 3, negative 1, and P, 7, negative 4 is a point on the circle, pretty much what this looks like. Find the equation of the line tangent to the circle at point P, which they're showing here. And then hint, recall the tangent line to a circle is perpendicular to the radius. You don't know that, but they're saying that, so once we know that, we can use it. So basically, if I can find the slope of this line, I know this one's perpendicular to it, which gets me that slope. I have this point to find the equation of a line, right? I need y equals mx plus b, so I, I just need a point and a slope. Um, so let's figure out what this slope is, and then that's going to get us to um, the perpendicular one. So I have m equals y2 negative 4 minus y1 negative 1 over x2 7 minus x1 3. So negative uh, 4 plus 1 would be negative 3, and then 7 minus 3 would be 4, which makes sense. This looks like it's going over 4 and down 3. So over 4, down negative 3. So there's our negative 3 fourths. So I can do by the points or from the graph either way. Once I have that, now m perpendicular, remember we flip it and then opposite sign because the two slopes should multiply to negative 1. So m perpendicular is going to be positive and 4 thirds. Once I got that, now we're at point slope um, back from the first exam. And this was uh, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Or you could also do y equals mx plus b, solve for b. It's the same thing, just a slightly different setup. Um, so here we go, y minus y1 is negative 4. M is 4 thirds, and then X minus X1 was 7. And so that's a little bit of a mess. I'm going to get a fraction, but that can happen. So here we'll have Y plus 4 equals 4 thirds X, and then that is minus 28 thirds. And then I'm going to add that 4 third, the 4 over. So let me just do that like this. Oops, I'm going to subtract the 4, sorry. And then let me do 3 over 3 right there. <clears throat> so those cancel, and I have y equals 4 thirds x. And then this would be minus 28 thirds minus 12 thirds. And that would be um, 4 thirds x. Ooh, 30, 40, minus 40 thirds. Um, so that one came out fairly ugly. 3 goes into 40 be about 13. Yeah, it looks about right. Um, so that's our equation. Uh, it won't necessarily be quite that bad on the homework, but that's that's the idea to that. So we, we're given this line, and we can find um, the perpendicular one to it. And once we have 
a slope at a point, we can always get the equation of the line, even if it's not a very nice one.